Welcome back boys and girls. In today's video we're going to be making a very cool post-process uh, thermal vision effect that I teased a couple times in some previous videos and once on, on Discord. And we're not really going to need anything to get started. I have this noise mask sitting here, which you can generate in two or three clicks in Photoshop. It's just some monochromatic noise. It's, uh, it's actually just optional, but uh, we'll get to that a little bit later on. So first up, just right click, make yourself a new material. We'll call it thermal PP. And just to save some time, we'll make a material instance and uh, then open it up. So first off, we'll have to change our material domain here to post process and then grab ourselves a scene texture node. But for this one, we're not going to use scene color. We need to change it over here in the texture ID to world normal. And you can see what that looks like just by plugging it straight into the emissive color. And in basic terms, what we're seeing here is just the direction that faces are facing uh, in relation to world space as expressed by these, uh, these strange colors. And if you're seeing this, this distortion on the side here, this weird jittering effect, then uh, grab your uh, grab your material node here, scroll down, and where you see blendable location, just change that to before tone mapping. This will uh, correct some of those odd sort of errors, and we'll also apply the the post processing before it applies the rest of the the rest of the post processing to the to the uh, final rendered frame. So with that sorted out, let's just hit save, and we'll go back to our editor here. And in fact, just to just so we can have something to look at, I'm going to grab this animation, just third person idle, just sit him in the scene just like that. And then over in the outline, I will grab our post process volume. We'll find the materials, add uh, an entry to this array, make it an asset reference, and then we'll come back to our materials folder and drag our thermal instance onto it. So we're not really uh, we're not really up to thermal vision yet, but you can see here more clearly sort of how the world normals. Uh, interacting with with objects in the scene and we can further uh, further explore this effect and flesh out the basic functionality of the uh, of the thermal vision that we're making by grabbing ourselves a fresnel light just like our fresnel function just like this and in order to use it with our world normal we're going to have to mask out the alpha of our of our node here so just make sure rg and b are enabled but a remains disabled and we'll plug that into the normal with that done, we'll need a scalar parameter. This one we'll just call, call it the hot for now. Set it to something like two. And we'll plug that into our exponent in. And then we'll need two colors to, to uh, make, the, make the effect sort of work. First off though, we'll put a lerp down, just hold in L and click. And then we'll hold in three and click for a color. Convert it to a parameter. Call this one the hot gen hot. So it's the hot generator hot color. And then we'll duplicate it. This one will be our hot generator cold color. And we'll change these. We'll make our cold something like a like a green. So we'll crank that up just like that, maybe a little more green. And our oh, that's the wrong one. See so what? We'll just make this one red. So that's our hot color. And our cold color will be our green. Something like that. Alrighty, so we'll plug in our cold to B, our hot into A, and then the result of this Fresnel into the alpha, and we'll put this into our emissive color like that. And we can see in our preview here that we now have the, the hot generator for our, for our scene. If we hit save, we'll be able to see this in, uh, in real time in the editor. There we go. So this is sort of the start of our, of our effect here. Everything is currently set to just our, our hot shades. And now we can see how the Fresnel and the world normal are uh, affecting our model here. Perhaps it's a little tricky to see against the the really bright sort of background, but that's okay. We'll flesh this all out as we as we go forward. So the first thing to take into consideration is what in our scene is going to be hot, what is going to be cold, and how do we make the material tell the difference between between hot and cold. For the time being, though, we'll just duplicate this whole graph here, and we'll rename our colors. So as opposed to our hot generators. Now we've got cold gen hot. And that's not what I wanted. Go away. And our cold gen, cold gen cold. So we can tell the difference between our hot and our cold colors. Now our cold gen cold here, we'll make it like a darkish sort of blue something around like that. And for the hot side of our cold generators, we'll make it a really dark blue. 
sort of close to close to black. Some really really dark blue there. And then uh, as for finding out which one the material wants to use as hot and which one's cold, depending on the object, we'll need to get ourselves an if node, and we're going to use custom depth. So if we duplicate our world normal here, like that, but we'll set this to scene depth, and we'll duplicate it again and set this to custom depth. Where are we? There it is. Then we'll be able to use this if node to, uh, to differentiate between our hot and our cold objects. So we'll also need a component mask because we don't want to use the entire, uh, we just want a yes and no, just a binary value. So we'll mask out our red and our blue channels and just get green, plug this into our color, and our scene depth here is going to be our A value. And our custom depth will make up our B value, so we'll just duplicate this mask, plug that in, and hook it up to B. So far, so good. And now all we have to do is plug in our, uh, our hot lap into yes, which is the A is greater than B, and our cold gen into A is less than B. Now, if we plug in this if into our emissive color, we'll be able to see what's going on. So in our preview, what we're looking at now is just the, the no custom depth. In other words, just the cold, uh, our cold generators. So we'll go back to our tutorial level, and we'll see here, we'll use our little animation here as the, as the hot. So just click on that, find custom depth, turn it on, and there we go. So the basics of our, of our uh, thermal vision post-process are well underway. So we've got our cold, our hot. Uh, there's some other things to do, for example, the sky, which we'll mask out. Let's, uh, let's do that now. So we'll move this over, give ourselves a little bit of space, and we're just gonna mask out the sky. I've done this before in, uh, in the Toon Shader video. So this uh, should be fairly familiar if you've been following my work. Just duplicate a scene texture node, set this to our scene depth. And we will also need, we need another if node, and we'll need a color. We'll get our cold color here. This will do, and we'll just rename this. Uh, where are we? Sky color. Cool, and this will be our A is greater than B. We'll get just a constant, set it to one, and this will be our B value. And as for our scene depth, we'll come out of here, out of the color, and we'll divide by sky distance. Sky distance, which is gonna be some huge number, probably like 10,000, one E plus 04. We'll plug that into the, the B value of our divide. And then we'll come out of our divide into a desaturation. And this will be our A value. And this is how you mask out the sky. So anything, well, it's more of a distance mask than a straight up sky mask. So anything that's further away than this value, than our sky distance, will just be rendered as the color, just as our normal sky color. So we'll plug that into emissive. i uh, close that because I haven't hooked up the other, <laughs> the other arm. Our A is less than B value will be the result of our if from earlier. So now we have a sky mask, a custom depth mask, and our, our hot and cold generators. So hit save. Oh, and we'll also need to rename this, this Fresnel down here. We'll just call it cold Fresnel. All right, we're underway. And in fact, we'll double up this call for now. We'll set this to four. Hit save, and we should be good to go. So here's the result of our, of our thermal pros, uh, post process. We'll go back to our post process volume, find our material. We have the instance in there. So let's open that up. And here we are. Now we should be able to uh, manipulate some values here if we wanted to. Turn all of these on and we can adjust colors. Let's see if, yeah, so I think the green lens most sort of more matches the, the traditional sort of thermal vision that we are that we are more familiar with. But we can do more with this effect. Like this is a pretty, I mean, it's nice, but it's a little bit boring. We we can do more with it. So let's uh, let's see if we can. Oh yeah, the noise mask. Let's make ourselves a noise filter. So our noise filter will basically be uh, like the heat haze post process that I made in one of my first videos. We'll uh, get ourselves texture coordinates, texture coords. We'll also need a multiply and a scalar. This will be our noise UV scale. And this is going to need to be set to, let's say 0 0.75. We'll hook these up into multiply. So we're just multiplying our texture coordinates by, by a scalar value. This will uh, increase the scale of, a, of the effect on screen. We'll go out of our multiply into a panner. 
And then we'll need another scale art. This will be our noise panel. Which we'll set to uh, 1.5. We'll come out of here into an append. And we'll just append zero. Like this into speed. And we're about ready. So we'll just drag this over. I'll get a texture. You can hold in T and click for a texture. And we'll need a noise mask. There he is. The results of our panel will be plugged into the uh, UVs of our texture. And then we'll uh, get another scalar. This will be our noise multiplier. Noise multi. And a multiplier to plug it into. Just like that. Our noise multiplier is going to be something very, very small. 0 0.0075. And the result of our multiply here, we're going to add back to our texture coordinates. Just like this, just add. And then the results of our add are going to go into the UVs of both of these world normal. Oh, hang on. Ah, the problem here is that we're, we're not using a full RGB texture. We just need the red channel from our noise mask there. And then she'll work fine. And we'll plug in the other world normal. And we'll also... We'll also need to plug in the result of the add to these two up here, the custom depth and the scene depth of our custom depth mask. And then we can see some, uh, some nice noise effects, but if we save it, we'll really be able to check this out in the editor. And here is the result. So now we have a noise filter, and if we open up our instance again, we'll be able to really crank this up and uh, play with some of, the, some of our noise effects. If we lower it, it gets quite, uh, quite radical. The panner, we can slow down or speed up as we want. <laughs> make some interesting uh, interesting effects. The multiplier here, really muck about with the scene. But we'll, we'll leave it at the defaults that we set just for now. But uh, we're not done yet. So this, this is one way to do, to do you know, our, our filter over the top, but we can do some other things. So if you go back and watch uh, my low resolution post-process uh, video, we make like a, a classic Game Boy filter. We can recreate that effect and add it to our thermals as well. So for a low resolution filter, Let's get a couple of scalars. Call this one res x and res y, and set these both to let's say 128. Okay, now we'll come out of here into an append, plug them both in, and we'll have to grab the screen position to get the actual UVs of the frame that we're rendering. And we'll come out of our UVs here into a multiplier. And we'll have to come out of this append and floor our values so we don't get any sort of weird blurry artifacts in our, in our result. Come out of this multiply into another floor. And then a divide to finish off the scene. So we'll divide our resolution here by the screen position, basically, by plugging into these divides. And then we can plug the result of this divide into our scene texture nodes, like so. You can see the effect in the, in the preview scene here. In fact, if we drop these down a little bit more, say to 96, we can get a really, really low resolution sort of appearance in the scene here. There we go. Look at that, not bad. Although in the actual scene here, see it's quite, uh, quite big, quite blocky. So we set this back up to 128 and we'll hit save. There we go, a little, little bit better. In fact, we'll go up a little bit more. So 256. Let's save again. And back in the editor. Yeah, there we go. More like the you know the, the, the thermal scopes in Fortnite, maybe. Where they have that, that blocky low res sort of appearance to them. But we are not done yet, so we can implement this in game now with our characters. If I hit play, here is our first person character just wandering around. So first off, we'll go back to our outliner here, grab our post-process volume, find the material, and just trash it. Because we don't quite need it now. And then open up our first person character in the world settings and find it, open it up. And here we are. So let's add a post process to our character. Done. And then add our instance to its materials. So like before, just add an entry to this array, use asset reference. And then we'll get our, our third person instance. So if we compile that and now we hit play. Now our character has the, has the thermal post process activated. So far, so good. First off though, let's just disable our post process by default. So now it's not appearing. It is there, it's just set to, to disabled. 
So in our first person character, we can build out some functionality to activate and deactivate the, the post process in game. So if we find, let's say the C key, just like that, and we'll come out of this press straight into a flip flop so we can toggle our post process on and off. Let's, we'll drag in our post process here, come out of there with set enabled. And when we press it, we'll set it to yes. And then when we press it again, we'll set it to no. And just to test that this is working, we'll compile, save, hit play. And there we go. So the C key is turning on and off our post process. But we can uh, score ourselves some style points from here by uh, adding in some extra functionality. So if you go into my uh, video backlog, I'll also leave a link in the description and find the night vision tutorial that I did. You'll notice that uh, if I find it down here, that I made a, a widget for that, which is just a black square that I overlaid over the the, uh, the canvas there, which if I drag this slider has an animation, which will go from totally transparent to black and then back to transparent over the span of one second. So if you'd like to, to you know, go into more detail about how to make this, uh, this short little HUD with the animation, just check out my night vision uh, video in the description below. So we'll come out of our flip flop here where we'll add, or rather create widget. In fact, I'm gonna make myself a little bit of space here. The uh, widget we want is quick fade and we'll come out of here with an add to viewport. Actually, we'll come out of the return value here. Add to viewport, just like that. And then if we delay, delay 0 0.5, that's uh, half the length of our animation in the HUD. So it's going to actually transition when the, when the HUD is at its absolute darkest, when it's pitch black. And we'll also duplicate this for the other one. We'll hook this up to B, quick fade, all good. And now we'll compile and save, we'll hit play. When I hit C, there we go. So we're, we're fading in and out with our thermal post process. Very, very cool. The next thing we'll do, because we're going for style points, is we'll come back into our editor here and I'll find my materials. Where are we? There we go. We'll get ourselves, uh, when we right click, go to materials and textures, a material parameter collection. And we'll call this thermal params. We'll open it up, make a couple of scalars. Oh, where are we? A little arrow. Uh, if we get res x and res y, in fact, I'll make another one for uh, noise multi. And we'll set these defaults. Um, in fact, we'll set them really low, 48 for each of the resolutions and for the, the noise multi, let's say uh, 0.05 or maybe 0.5. Save that, all good. Then back in our material, all we have to do is right click, start typing collection. We'll get our collection parameter. We need to set it, so it's set to thermal params. Get one for res X, one for res Y, and one for our noise multi. So well, let's uh, plug these in to where they are appropriate, our noise multi into noise multi, res x and y obviously to replace the scalars in our material. And we'll hit save. Then back in our character, we're gonna to need to get ourselves a timeline, or a couple timelines, but we'll start with just the one. Let's call this, um, call it noise. Actually, we'll do it with the, we'll do it with a low res filter. So we'll call it, let's call it res and open it up, we'll get ourselves a float track. Let's add two keys and set our time to uh, two seconds. And our first key, time set to zero, value set to zero, and time set to two, actually we'll set our length to one. Time at one, our value at one. And this sets up our timeline. Then back in our uh, oh, we could we could rename our float track, I guess. Where is it? Rename. We'll just call it float. I don't like having you know new variable or the default the default sort of nothing names to them. So there's our timeline, and we're going to use this timeline to affect the uh, scalar parameters in the material parameter collection. So once we hit C, we'll drag out of this delay straight into play, and in the update we'll go for uh, set scalar parameter, parameter value. Make ourselves a little more space. We're starting to build out a bit of a tree here. 
our parameter value will be found in thermal params. The parameter name, uh, res x and res y. So we'll hook this up. And as for the parameter value, let's come out of here into a lab. In F lab. Plug our, the result of our float here into the alpha. And then the result of this lab will be going into each of these parameter values. And our A and B, our A and B will be where it uh, sort of fades in from low res into the slightly higher resolution. It's just going to add a little bit of style. You'll see what I mean in a sec. So if we start with 48, and then our B will be 256. We'll plug that in. And in fact, we'll set our time here to, to, to double the length. And we'll just have a quick test here, see what happens. Nothing so far. Ah, turns out the, the problem was that I didn't have the right... Uh, <laughs> The right material i was using just the base material not the instance so here we are now we can now we can see how it goes hit save play when we hit c you see the low res sort of filters sort of fade in but we can make this a little more pronounced if i set this down to even lower 24 and i will leave that at 256 compile hit play and there we go we don't need to set the the values back, uh, you know, for when we disable the, the thermals, because the our lerp and our uh, set scalar parameters are just going to take care of it every single time we hit C. All right, that's done. We can do the same thing with the noise as well, just using the, the basic uh, similar functionality that we did. So let's hook these all up and have a looky. There we go. So all of our UVs are set. We'll hit save. And then back in our uh, in our first person character here, We'll go from 0 0.05 to the value that we decided on earlier, 0 0.0075. Set this to noise multi, and we'll skip the second one because we don't need it. Hit compile, play. And you can see the noise sort of, sort of fades in. It sort of comes together sort of steadily and slowly. It gives a little bit of a warm-up effect to the, to the thermal post process. I quite like it. Very, very nice. And as a final thing, just to, just to clean up a little bit, Let's uh, come out of our quick fade HUD widget here and we'll remove from parent. Because even though it's, uh, it gets transparent at the end, it isn't, it isn't destroyed, you know? So it's going to have to, um, we're gonna have to manually remove it from the parent ourselves. Otherwise we're just making lots and lots of transparent HUDs and it's, uh, <laughs> it's not very good. So we'll also grab a delay here and we'll duplicate that. We'll also want a delay for the other 0.5 seconds of the, of the animation and to get this line in a more sort of sensible spot we can double click the path here and just move it out the way and we're doing one of these for each actually so we'll now we might just make two so anyway we'll duplicate this plug it in and plug in each of our blue execution paths here into our remove from parent nodes we'll compile and play make sure everything still works and yeah, there we have it. So that's, uh, that's how to make a very simple, very easy thermal post-process effect in Unreal Engine that uh, you know, has, has some style points there at the end. So thanks you guys for watching so far. And uh, yeah, catch you in the next one.